Welcome to the Broken Pie Chart Podcast, episode 143. I'm your host, Derek Moore. And this week, we're going to be asking the question, what do stocks do during inflationary periods? What types, you know, how do we define what type of inflation that we're seeing? And I'm going to review some data. I went back and I did a quick search and I found uh, some interesting data from O'Shaughnessy or OSAM that I'll kind of refer to. Or I'll call, of course, you know, put it in the, the show notes. And by the way, just want to mention we are on pace for another record month as far as uh, listeners and downloads and all that type of stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, and by the way, if anybody want to get, wants to get a, in touch with me, uh, my, you can send me an email at Derek, D-E-R-E-K dot Moore, M-O-O-R-E, at zegafinancial.com. That's Z as in zebra, E-G-A, and financial. That's up to you on how to spell that. And, you know, I've gotten a couple of questions about, you know, how, how do you guys do hedging and how do you build portfolios? So if anyone's interested in talking to me about that, uh, by all means, you know, reach out via email and we can set up some time to talk. Of course, if you have suggestions or topics like this one today was a, a listener suggestion, go ahead and, uh, and reach out as well. So the obviously 6.2% was the year over year. So as I, you know, I'll, I'll link to last week's episode, but you, you do have to be careful and how you read these numbers and, and the way that they're given to you. So remember that when monthly data is put out, it is annualized from month to month, and then it's annualized. But then they also look at, let's say, you know, October, okay, well, what was the CPI level? And then they go back one year and they say 6.2% year over year. All right. And then, as I explained in the last episode, we have sort of a, a year to date where, um, you know, I, I calculated where inflation is. It's obviously up higher and we've got two months to go. But a lot of people have asked me, you know, how do stocks do during periods of inflation? And so I went up and I looked and, you know, at first I wasn't going to discuss this too much because this is from April 2011. And I thought, well, we really haven't had any meaningful inflation since, you know, as, as the news media has pointed out, 1990 was the last time it was this high year over year. But then also, um, you know, we, re we really concerned more not with the 2012 to 2000 through 2021. We're concerned about, uh, you know, taking a look at the late 1970s, early 80s, and some of the different periods. And so I said, yeah, yeah, this is actually, the way they put this together was helpful. And so I, I wanted to get into it. And the way they define inflation is you've got severe inflation, high Fed target to moderate inflation, low inflation, and deflation. Let's, let's just cover the, the easy one first. Well, actually, no, let, let's start at the top. So severe inflation uh, basically, the way they define it is years in which annual inflation exceeds 10%. And there were eight out of the last 111 years. So this is going back to 1918, it looks like. I think it's going back to 1918. So, and, and basically, well, I'll get to how often it occurs. And then high inflation, they define that as... Uh, you know, and then I'll I'll get into some of the periods that um, that they kind of looked at. But there, there's high inflation and Fed target to model it moderate inflation. Remember, the Fed target is generally has been around two percent, although they've recently uh, adjusted that a little bit. They're willing to let inflation run hotter, low inflation. Uh, was when inflation was between zero and one point six percent, and actually there were nineteen out of the last one hundred and eleven that that's occurred. And then deflation, deflation is where you actually have negative price appreciation. You don't have appreciation; you have uh, depreciation. So that's when prices fell. And to give you, okay, this is nineteen hundred to two thousand ten, so that's one hundred and eleven years because you include 2010. And the, the number of, of, or the percent of time that, that we've had severe inflation looking at this period 
and we've certainly not had severe inflation uh, since the uh, it was late seventies, early eighties. Well, I, I know that I shouldn't say I think, but severe inflation happens about seven percent of the time. High inflation, nineteen percent of the time. Uh, the Fed target or moderate inflation about forty one percent of the time. Low is seventeen percent, and deflation sixteen percent. That actually surprised me, but typically you'll get deflation around recessions. And remember, that's for the year, so it, it's uh, not that common. You know, sometimes we see a few quarters, um, but you know, it's not not that common to uh, to happen. We look at severe inflation. Really, there's a number of different periods that this happened. The average annual inf- inflation during these periods is about fifteen point two percent. And this covers the 1916 to 1919. Uh, then you have 1946, 74, 79, and 80. So it doesn't happen that often. And I said, okay, well, what did what did stocks do during this time? And so there, there's two ways to do this. You could go with what's called a nominal return. And nominal return is really where it doesn't account for inflation. And so if inflation, if your return was 20%, but inflation was 10%. You say, well, your nominal return is 20%. But then you, after you account for inflation, it, uh, and then there's two ways to do this. You've got to calculate the, the real return. I say there's two ways because the, the correct way to do it is, is one plus the decimal of, of, the, of the percent return. So 1.2 over uh, or divided by 1.10 because it's one plus. 10%, but use the decimal, and you get 1.09 about. Let me see if I uh, if I did that right. And But the other way to do it is, is you could do sort of the back of the envelope, back of the napkin, where you just simply subtract the two. So if I, you know, it's about 9.1% or so is the real return there. And you might say, well, wait a second, why, why is that? It's sort of beyond the scope of, of this broadcast. Uh, I don't, I don't want to Poor, poor people about, um, you know, the intricacies of uh, compounding and, and, you know, different things like that. But uh, let's just say it's about 9.1% real return. So real means after inflation, whenever you hear the word real. And sure, you could say, well, my return was 20% and my uh, inflation was 10%. So I had about a 10% return. And that's, that's round about the same way. But how did stocks do during this period? Well, the average real stock return was negative 7.3%. So that's after inflation. And you had inflation at 15.2%. Now, interestingly enough, though, I actually went back and I I pulled some, I don't have all the years. um, I only go back to about 1928, my my data of S&P total returns. But I, I did kind of find it a little bit interesting And that is in in 1979 and 1980, you actually had a total return in the S&P of 18.5% and in 1980, 31.74%. During one of the other years, they say in 1974, it was negative 25.9%. So it is is interesting that, uh, you know, two of the most recent years, you actually had pretty good stock markets, Uh, quite, quite a good stock market. Uh, of course, 73, 74 was a recession, and uh, that was negative 14.3, negative 25.9. So you did have a recession and then you know several years of expansion with one, one pullback in there. Uh, then when you look at bonds, though, what was clear, though, is the average real bond return was negative 12.2%. And so bonds did worse than stocks by you know, close to 5% difference there in the return. And that's not surprising. But severe inflation, though, um, they actually had a a positive nominal return. Remember, that's not accounting for inflation. So if we just look, you'd say, you know, around 8 plus 8% during severe inflation. Bond's not as great, right? So then, then you kind of go back and you say, what about high inflation? High inflation, they define here as uh, 
average inflation of about 6.4%. Year over year right now, we're 6.2%. And even after inflation, stocks did have a positive real return of about plus 2.5%. Now, if we do the, the quick back of the napkin, we'd say, all right, nominal return around, around 9%. Uh, kind of close on a nominal basis to periods during really high inflation. And they define, you know, 1987 to 1990, for example, that was part of the high inflation. So stocks in both periods, positive nominal, and this one, positive real return. Bonds, by the way, were negative uh, 2.8% uh, real return. So then we go to the, the moderate, and stocks do really well during moderate inflation. Average real stock return, 11.1%. Bonds only 3.6%, but still positive. This is about an average inflation of 2.8%. And then low inflation, it's interesting because moderate stocks historically have done better during moderate inflation than low inflation. Low inflation's uh, average annual is about 1%, meaning prices are only rising 1%. And the real return plus 5.9%. Bonds plus 4.5% real. So it seems like if if I'm looking, oh, by the way, we didn't talk about deflation. Yeah, deflation, the average real stock return is about plus 16.7%. The average annual deflation or inflation was minus 3.2%. Uh, bonds plus 9.5 average real bond return. So uh, def deflation Yes, stocks and bonds both, both do well, both on a nominal basis and on a, uh, a real basis. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because stocks have not done that bad. Um, they've held up during periods of high inflation. And there's any number of reasons for that. I mean, part of it is, uh, at least in the case right now, if, if you really think there's going to be runaway inflation. I'm not saying there is. Then you have to ask yourself, would you, you know, the way that bond yields are, are right now, I um, mean, the 10 years back under 1.6, I think it closed uh, Friday at about 1.53%. Means you, you buy a 10-year treasury, 1.53%, which by the way, has a negative real return or almost certainly will this year. I shouldn't say almost certainly will, because you never know what rates are going to do and things like that. But if, look, I mean, if, if, if you buy, if you would have bought a treasury at the beginning of the year and yields were lower than they are now, with inflation, you have a negative real return after inflation. Uh, but yeah, so stocks really haven't, at least historically, and look, I mean, we haven't had a period of severe inflation since 79, 80, and we haven't had what I call high inflation since 1990, but even in uh, in the 19, you know, let's look at 1990, and actually let, let's look at 87 through through 90 because that was a quote unquote high inflation period. And yeah, I mean 87 plus 5.8 percent total return, so that includes dividends. Now remember 87, the market was down. Uh, around, I think it was negative 30% drawdown at one point during the year, and then it came back. 88, uh, 60 and a half positive. 89, 31 and a half positive. 90 was negative 3.06. So there, there's a negative. Uh, but generally during that period as well, stocks did, did, uh, did, did well, did well during um, periods of inflation. And so I'll put a link in the show notes to this because I, I do think, even though it's, uh, I, I don't think they've updated it, but I think it's instructive that, it, you know, as you're thinking about how stocks do, historically, stocks have done okay during periods of high inflation. One of the interesting things too, and, and this is something I'll be watching, I might have mentioned this last week, was the idea that although we do have higher inflation than we've had uh not severe but i would say you know obviously it's it's higher than than it's been uh, margins if you look at the s p 500 uh the company's reporting cor corporate earnings earnings have been good uh 
and margins have been expanding. Now, when you say margins, we sell something for a hundred dollars and it cost us ninety dollars. Uh, that's a that's a ten percent profit margin because you make ten bucks for every hundred dollars that you sell because you know you cost us ninety, right? And that's net net profit margin. Let's say gross profit margin includes your cost of goods, but leaves out you know what you have to pay a sales force to sell it or uh, different things like that. But we've seen margins expanding. And so it seems like so far companies are rising or raising prices. But at the same time, uh, you would think their margins are getting hurt. Their margins have been okay. And so, you know, I wouldn't read too much into what I'm saying. Um, it's just something to keep an eye on. Because if, let's say, uh, prices, increase and they can they can absorb any inflation or their input costs aren't uh, or they find other other ways to save money or uh, become more efficient get more productivity out of their uh, uh, their workforce uh, if you see profits not only profits but margins increasing that's actually a pretty good sign I, I, I don't you know I'm not an, uh, an analyst I'm not sitting here looking at companies and don't necessarily or you know ever give buy or sell recommendations or anything like that. Um, but the one thing I would say is that um, if I, I like the idea of being more in stocks, but but being in stocks with hedges in place. And the reason behind that, uh, not only do I believe in in the idea of of uh, hedged equity and having growth, but also putting a floor in the portfolio. But you think about some of the alternatives, and the alternatives might be something like a 60-40 portfolio, where you have 60% in stocks and 40% in bonds. Remember what I just told you, though. In, if you have bonds where yields are already low and inflation in itself doesn't necessarily cause bonds to move, but if interest rates were to rise and rates being this low, well, the, the risk of rising rates or, or if rates should move up materially, materially means, you know, not a quarter point, not, not necessarily even a half pointer. You know, it, it, it's, let's say they, they moved up several percentage points. Uh, that could cause a lot of pressure on bond prices. And a 60-40 portfolio potentially could come under some pressure there. So, I think with with bonds yielding what they are, uh, there is a greater, let's say, you know, I, I would have a higher propens propensity of saying, you know, why not be in stocks but be hedged, as opposed to a sixty forty portfolio or having uh, you know any any number of of shading. So, I, I just bring that up because I I think uh, sure there's always risk in the in the markets we know there'll be drawdowns we know at some point there'll be another recession uh, but stocks historically have done okay even during periods uh, on a nominal basis of severe inflation and they've done okay during high inflation so if you can own something and then you can also have hedges on it uh, in case there there are material or drawdowns that gets really interesting so um, the other thing that people bring up is, you know, maybe I should own Bitcoin or maybe, you know, we did a, a Bitcoin episode. We talked about, is it a bubble or not? Uh, really, it was uh, Nassim Tlaib's comments on CNBC where he called it another tulip bu bubble. Uh, Jay Pestricelli and I, we went over this and I'll link to that episode as well. But a lot of people are saying, wait a second, I'll just own crypto as a hedge on inflation. And I don't, I'm not sure crypto has been around the block enough. It's still pretty new, and we don't have data. We don't have a lot of information on what it will do in an inflationary period. Uh, people also point to gold. Gold definitely ran up in the late 1970s, early 80s. Uh, ran up quite a bit. Uh, interestingly enough, gold has run up a bit since you know it was uh, 265. 
this is U.S. dollars per troy ounce. I'm getting this on Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis website. Uh, and, and by the way, if anything you want to Google, Google Fred, and then what you were looking for, and chances are the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis will will have some of this stuff. But it was two sixty five. Uh, per troy ounce in july of 2001 and then by you know this is like 2011 or so it was up uh, 1700 came back down and then then went back up to uh to 1900 so gold gold has these periods where it it sort of runs but if you look and you go from the period of you know september 1980 all the way to you have to wait till like October of 07, just on a price level, uh, not ne- not even saying your real return after inflation, but just to to get back to uh, to break even if you bought around there. So look, I, I don't pretend to know what gold is going to do, uh, but I I do think that there are runs and there are spikes and certainly run up a little bit, um, and for most people who have stock portfolios already, I think it's a good question to ask, you know, why not just be hedged, right? So, all right, so let me leave it there and I'll put a link in the show notes to the data and uh, you can see what O'Shaughnessy or OSAM, they've got some good content. So if uh, you can go to their their uh, website and poke around as well. And they've also done, uh, I think it's Patrick O'Shaughnessy. He has a... a I was going to say a webcast, no, a podcast. And he's got some good content out there. So uh, if I find one on inflation, I'll link to that. Um, Anyway, so rather than rating, reviewing, and starring, go ahead and share this with someone that you might find is interesting. My offer to anyone in Gibraltar, if I have a listener there, I think I have yet to have a listener in Gibraltar, uh, go ahead and email me and I will send you a signed book. I actually don't know how much it will cost to send a book to Gibraltar. I probably should have looked at that first, but uh, anyway, that's uh, we haven't had a listener from there yet. A lot of listeners from everywhere, everywhere else, but not from Gibraltar yet. All right, folks, we will talk to you next week. Uh, remember, Derek, D-E-R-E-K dot more at zegafinancial.com. Go ahead and shoot me an email with ideas for episodes. Maybe you have a guest that you think should be on. Drop me a line, let me know. Or if you want to talk about your portfolio. All right. Have a great week, everyone.